is my great pleasure to introduce um, a short version of Kira McLean's excellent workshop on Hanami. Thanks, Elena. Yeah, so hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Um, I will, I'll post a link in the um, chat here in case anyone wants to follow along on their own machines. There's a repo for this workshop. Um, right, I can never figure out how to get to the chat once I start sharing. There it is. Um, the main branch of that repo is just a skeleton project. And there's a branch called Complete Workshop with everything that we're gonna see today if you want to follow along yourself. Um, How's the size? I have zoomed in a bunch, but I know in the past, sometimes it's been hard for people to see. Look fine to me. So, sounds like it's okay. Okay, cool. So yeah, today I'll do a little bit of stuff in a REPL um, eventually, oops. But for now, we'll just go over quickly some background stuff. So yeah, I guess first of all, I'm Kira. I, I work with a UK-based company called Swirl. We build open data publishing tools for the government there. <coughs> Excuse me. It's so dry here in the winters and suffering. Um, and yeah, today we'll go over some data visualization stuff with this library called Hanami. And I'm gonna assume some familiarity with Clojure and a closure IDE, but not necessarily any of these specific libraries. But um, yeah, obviously happy to help anyone get set up with closure and a closure IDE separately if this whole language is new to you. But uh, just for today, for the sake of moving along quickly, we'll just kind of start with like open a REPL and hopefully that makes sense. Um, and the goal is, yeah, of course, just for everyone to be able to, to do some basic data visualizations. So Quickly, we'll go over at first a couple of the sort of underlying libraries we're using here, um, which include Vega Lite and, and then Clerk is a, is a closure one, but <clears throat> I'll just mention briefly how we're using it. And then obviously explain what Hanami is and do some, some background about the basics. And then we'll hopefully practice together and do some actual visualizations. So yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. Just quickly, Clerk is um, probably most like closure data people have heard of it, but it's a, basically a closure library that turns a closure namespace into a notebook, which is basically like an HTML page that you can render in your browser. And it's got all kinds of stuff built in and helpful data, sort of data utilities. And one of those things that it includes out of the box is a renderer for Vega Lite specifications. So that's what we're gonna be using today. And yeah, I guess I haven't mentioned yet, but Vega Lite is basically just a JavaScript library or sort of grammar for data visualizations, which we'll get into in a minute here. So yeah, to get started, if you're following along on your own machine, which you certainly don't have to, um, but just in case you want to, you can either clone that repo and just use the main branch or start a new closure project, however you want with these depths and then create a new workspace called, I mean, Hanami or whatever you want um, with this at the top. And <clears throat> I guess, yeah, this, this stuff, if you wanna just copy paste it is in that repo there. And then we will, yeah, get started right away here. So I'll zoom in this one too, I guess. Um, so this, yeah, this whole workshop is itself also just like in a clerk notebook. So you can see what it's kind of doing. It's really just a, a closure namespace. So like I'll switch into it. And then um, these, all these comments, if you write them in sort of markdown style, it will render them as HTML. Uh, but otherwise um, to show it, we'll just send, run this line once and then run this line once. And then obviously this, the name of this file has to be whatever you called your, your project namespace. But once we do that, then you get this, which is what we were just looking at. So obviously yours will be mostly empty if, if uh, you're starting setting up a new project, but <coughs> excuse me. Um, okay, so yeah, hopefully 
if you're following at this point, you'll have just an empty clerk notebook set up. Um, if not, that's no problem. But for now, we'll move on and just say a couple quick words about Vega Light. So, yeah, as I mentioned, Vega Light is basically, a, they call it a grammar for graphics, the authors do. So it's kind of like a language um, almost, except it's not like an arbitrary programming language for whatever instructions you want. It specifically describes um, data visualizations and it's really it's JSON. So Vega Light is kind of like a superset or subset of JSON. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, another way to think about it is a declarative way to describe how to visually encode data. And it, it can also do lots of cool stuff with interactions, which we probably won't get into today just because of the timing. But um, yeah, as, as a grammar, it's basically made up of different sort of words and different rules for combining those words. So in your Vega Light specs, we'll see an example here in a second, there's basically these six keys are kind of the main ones. <clears throat> Um, I say keys because, yeah, usually, well, yeah, if you're working directly with Vegalite, you'll be using a, a JSON format, but you can also write these in Eden and Clojure and render them with Clerk, which is what we're going to do. So, yeah, so these six keys are kind of the main building blocks of the, the sort of sentence, so to speak, or the data visualization. And data is probably pretty obvious. It's just the input. Mark is the actual shape or type of graph that you're going to do. So like a line or a point or a bar. Um, encoding is usually the most complex one. And that's where you describe the mapping between the data and the marks. So how you tell Vega Light, like which fields correspond to which axes, for example, and other things like that. Then you can also do transformations um, right in the library itself. So this is kind of like a philosophical question, whether you should sort of prepare your data into the final format you want to present it in. Up ahead of time, or if you want to just give Vega Light some sort of messy data, you can kind of like filter and aggregate and <clears throat> do some other manipulations on the data right in the library itself. So, you know, different people have different approaches to how they do data analysis. But if you're working, for example, with like just some random data set you pulled off the internet, you maybe can't control how it's prepared or curated. And so that's where this can come in handy. Um, and then these two scale and guides are less commonly used as far as I can tell, um, but it's certainly useful. So scale is just like meta information about fitting your this one visualization into like a bigger um, set of ones or a sort of, yeah, if you have like multiple visualizations, you can change how they work together. And then guides is stuff like legends, legends and labels and um, other sort of like explanatory info around the graph. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Um, and then, yeah, so the rules for combining these words together are basically um, sort of all the different ways you can combine visualizations. So a lot of times you'll see like people who are using Vega Lite will use, have almost like a matrix or like a big dashboard type view, and you can put these together by concatenating them, layering them, <clears throat> repeating them. Faceting is sort of like showing like multiple versions of the same graph, but almost like representing a different, um, like a different layer of the data. Or if you have if you have a data set that has sort of multiple dimensions, so like more than just x and y, you could show multiple graphs for the same thing. Um, anyway, yeah. So there's there's a link to the docs here. Um, this is also in that on the completed workshop branch in that repo there. And there's tons and tons of stuff uh, that Vega Light can do. And there's certainly a lot more than, than we've touched on here. But for now, just in the sake, for the sake of moving on um, and actually getting to see anything, um, we'll, we'll leave it at that. <clears throat> so yeah, just to show a quick example of how this all fits together. Um, this, this is a Vega Light spec and this one is pretty much just lifted directly from the examples. There's, there's tons and tons of examples in the docs up here that are really useful. And except that I convert it to Eden, just like with a simple JSON to Eden converter. But um, other than that, this is pretty much just straight Vega Lite still at this point. But you can see, so we've got like the data. So this is the input. 
um, and we'll talk about data sources in a minute as well. These are some transformations. So we could, we're doing some, some aggregations and some sort of grouping and stuff like that. Then we've got descriptions of how to encode the data. So how, which, which axes to plot where, and then in this case, we have two layers um, and one of the layers. So this is the final, this is what the graph looks like. And one of those layers is actually just these numbers. And so this is a cool thing about Clerk too. If we go, oops, here we go. Yeah. So if I've got like, is that still okay? This is hard to tell because the uh, indentation, but yeah. So we've got two layers and if I just save this, Clerk should refresh. So one of those layers was just doing those numbers maybe see here. Um, and then we've got other stuff going on here with the encoding. So like this, um, anyway, yeah. And the, I guess probably at this point it makes sense to, to talk about other stuff. But uh, anyway, so yeah, this is, yeah, this is just a Vegalite spec. And then this is what I was mentioning about Clerk, what it has built in, Clerk slash VL. If you pass this function, any valid Vega Lite spec, um, it will render it for you in the notebook, which is pretty useful. <clears throat> so you can, yeah, you can basically build up sort of whatever arbitrary visualizations you want and then just pass them over to Clerk. So, um, yeah, that's just a quick sort of like really whirlwind overview of Vega light, but it's somewhat relevant because Hanami, so this is the main thing we're going to talk about. Hanami is, you, there's different ways of thinking about it, but one is it's kind of in some ways a, like basically a closure wrapper for Vega light. It does much more than just wrap Hanami or sorry, wrap Vega light. But um, if you just wanted to use it for that, to just like sort of tidy up your Vega light specs, you could and just leave it at that. Um, it's, yeah, as I mentioned, though, it does a little bit more. So it's it's kind of another level of abstraction or simplification on top of Vega light. So you'll notice like this is still, this is not very much information to create this whole graph, which is pretty elaborate, um, but this could be even simpler or, or smaller, I guess, more compact. Um, there's some redundant information in there. And so Hanami kind of helps with that. Um, and then it's also not, you don't have to specifically, I mean, in theory, could use it for other things besides Vega light specs. It's at the, at the end of the day, like at, at, the found, at, a, at its foundation, Hanami is basically like a way to recursively replace parameterized templates. Um, so it's kind of this declarative, composable, um, like, way to com combine and um, describe these Vega light specs. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, yeah, so in Hanami, so some words that are going to come up a lot are templates and substitution keys. So a template in Hanami is basically just a closure map. So whenever you hear template, just think it's just a map. It's just a, a piece of a spec basically usually it's like a, a subset of this type of thing and substitution key is kind of like the core of the library in some ways um it's kind of where you get into actually kind of adding your own information to the visualizations and, and customizing them so <clears throat> in hanami there are several let me try to make this show both of them um, yeah, there are lots of default substitution keys and templates that are defined already by the library. So you can see those uh, in this atom here. Oops. So I'll just show it in, in my REPL here because it's a little bit easier to see than in the clerk output, uh, which is like scrolling horizontally. But uh, anyway, so yeah, these are, these are all the defaults that Hanami sort of comes with baked in, so to speak. And you can see any default with this helper, get default. It's obviously just fetching something out of this map, but it's a little bit nicer. 
So if we want to see what's sort of, for example, the, the default background color, it's going to be floral white. And the core sort of main thing in Hanami is this transform function. So this is in the core namespace and <clears throat> transform. And this is basically like the main transformation function. So what it does is takes a template, which is basically just a map, and then optionally a series of extra transformation key value pairs in sort of, yeah, in sort of as a second argument is a custom map. And then <clears throat> it, this transform function goes in and sort of fills in all of those values. So yeah, to demonstrate, we can see what, what I mean by that is like, so we have this transform function here and we give it a map that contains some substitution keys. So these are in Hanami, they're all in all caps. It's just kind of a convention. You could make them whatever arbitrary symbols you want, um, but all the sort of default baked in ones are gonna be in all caps just to kind of make it obvious, like what's a substitution key and what's not. So yeah, if we give this transformation function a map that contains any substitution keys as values, what we get <clears throat> is sort of the result here with the, the values filled in. So it's at the end of the day, it's pretty straightforward, but it's very powerful. Um, another cool thing is that the transformations are recursive. So if we inspect, um, at this point, maybe it makes sense to just show my uh, editor, so we can go through this together. So if we inspect <clears throat> the value of the default value for tooltip, we see the default value for tooltip itself contains a bunch of substitution keys, like all these ones, X, X type, X title, whatever. And so if we use that in a transformation, though those values get replaced sort of all the way down. So for example, here, my key, I replace the value of my key for this tooltip. What we get is, is this, and you know, you can see like if we see if we check what the default value of um, <clears throat> x type is, you'll see it's quantitative, and that's what we get filled in here. And so this is a useful time to mention. Um, I guess okay, one other thing. Sorry. So yeah, if you want to supply right, the second part of this transformation function is these this extra these extra arguments, which are sort of and this arbitrary list of key value pairs to, to replace. So yeah, as we saw the default value for X is obviously X here, but if you want to supply some custom value, this line 165 here is how you do it. So you can give as many um, extra arbitrary ones as you want. So if we did this, like some type, oops. Uh, you'll see that it gets filled in here. And this is our X and this is our X type. And so these transformations get sort of filled in and they're, yeah, kind of all, transformations all the way down, substitution keys all the way down. Um, so another sort of special value, so to speak, or useful thing to know about Hanami is this, um, special remove value. So you'll notice like up here, uh, the default tooltip value has four keys, field, type, title, and format. Um, but when we filled it in, just using only the defaults without any of our own uh, substitutions, we only ended up with two keys in each, in each map, field and type. And that's because if you, check out the value of the default value for this X tooltip title key. It's this um, special value, which is aliased as just RMB in Hanami. These are identical, um, <clears throat> which basically means like delete this key from the resulting map. So it's this uh, Hanami uses factor under the hood, which is the closure, another closure library for sort of manipulating data structures. Um, so this, the implementation details aren't super important, but what's useful to know is that like, if, if for example, some default, some Hanami default had a value that you didn't want for whatever reason in your final 
map, you can give it the value of art remove and it will it'll take care of it. So if we like replace that here, for example, you would never actually do this because you always need an X value for the like you need to tell your spec which field to use for the X axis. But if we make it remove instead, you'll see it's just gone and it's deleted or dissociated from the, the resulting map. So that's what that's about. And yeah, the next thing that Hanami comes with is a bunch of sort of built-in skeleton templates. So from here, so just what we've seen so far, you know, if you have a, a good imagination or some, <clears throat> I don't know, time and patience, you could just build up Vega light specs using this and kind of um, kind of go from there. But there's a few more sort of helpers or useful things that Hanami comes with because it is specifically meant for for helping out building Vega light specs. Like although you could use it at this point just for whatever I don't know, imaginary like whatever you can dream up of that you need to substitute keys and maps and closure. Um, but yeah, it comes with a bunch of sort of base templates. So again, templates are just maps, but these these base templates are basically like a useful starting point for for building up Vega Light specifications because they fill in a lot of the the boilerplate sort of default stuff that you're going to need. So this view base is kind of the foundation of all of them. And it's just a map with these specific keys. So like here you'll see those those key like words in the Vega Light grammar that we talked about earlier. You've got the encoding, the transform, um, the data. Those are sort of the main ones. And then some of this other stuff is is more like higher level info about how to render the graph. But um, and then if you just for demonstration's sake, if we pass this view base into the transform function, you'll see all the defaults get filled in. And then a bunch of stuff here had that none or remove value as its default, obviously, because we just are missing loads of these keys. So that's that's where they went. That's They didn't like disappear. It's that they have um, that special value. So this, if we, oh, right, there's no point of sending that, but yeah. If we look at our notebook here, um, yeah, this so far is not a valid Vega light spec uh, because, and you'll you'll see here, there won't be like if it worked. I guess it would be cooler if it showed something, but yeah, basically it's rendering nothing. Um, where'd it go? Sorry, up here. So. Hanami, so the, yeah, there's this view base, but then it also supplies several common sort of chart types and templates, which are other useful composable pieces. And so one that we can look at quickly here is like, for example, well, I guess we can show them here. So there's like a point chart. And so you'll see basically the difference is that it fills in a bunch of this info for what type of mark to use. So mark was another one of those key, like Vagalite words, um, sort of keys that you have to have. And this one will kind of just give you like a bunch of sensible defaults so you don't have to think too much about like how to make a point chart if you want or a bar chart, for example. And so here we can see if we just render, so if I comment this stuff out, um, if we just render the, the base point chart template here, we get something, but it's not, it's still not enough to actually have any like graph because we're still missing some key things and mainly the data and the encoding. So if we wanna see anything on the graph, obviously we have to tell it where to find the data and we'll talk about that next. But just for the sake of demonstration, one way to supply the data is to just straight up give it a URL. Um, and if you do that, you can see we still don't have anything because Vegalite doesn't know which values to plot where. Um, but if we tell it on the x-axis, put horsepower, on the y-axis, put miles per gallon. Now we'll see the plot. And so it's really that simple. Um, and then we've got this. And then we can do another 
like you can encode things on more dimensions. So like at a certain point you run out and there's, you know, this is, this gets into the whole like theory of data visualization and like how, like, where does it make sense to encode different information? And so obviously like spatial using sort of spatial, uh, like placement or whatever is like one of the most straightforward ways or the most easy to interpret for your users. If you're doing data visualizations, color is not ideal, but once we use sort of vertical and horizontal placement, we're kind of out of dimensions already because our screens can't render very much. So if you want to encode even more information than just like two axes, if you have a multi-dimensional data set like this one, you could, you know, add color, for example. So what we'll say, we'll say like, you encode the, the horsepower on the x-axis, x-axis, the miles per gallon on the y-axis, and then the origin of, you know, which, where these data points came from as the color. So, you know, this color one is the least straightforward to interpret or the least like obvious for, for people reading your visualizations, but um, anyway, but it's an option. And there's there's lots of, you know, Vegalite supports lots of different ways of, um, of doing this. The guys, the guys who originally, just as a quick side note, the guys who originally made the Vega Light library are kind of um, like huge like data analysis nerds. And so they put a lot of thought and effort into like, you know, how to do this well, which is cool. Um, so yeah, just in the remaining few minutes we have here, um, I guess, yeah, one last important thing to talk about is the data sources. Oops, sorry. So Vega Light, because yeah, so obviously to do anything, to do any sort of data visualization, you need you need some data. And Vega Light, so Hanami just basically passes whatever data you give it straight down to Vega Light. And Vega Light expects tabular data. And so there's lots of details about what they mean and how to format it in their docs here, just in the data section. But briefly, just to make it work with Hanami, there's four different different keys you can supply. So in this one, you saw we gave it UData um, for URL, but you could either do that. So if you give it either a relative URL to somewhere on your machine or somewhere, I guess that your REPL has access to uh, somewhere that's on the class path. Um, oh, sorry, that's a, a new bug in Safari. Whenever I highlight it, it messes up the, uh, the size. Oh, that's annoying, um, unless I do that. So, <clears throat> Yeah, or you can give it a fully qualified URL to a CSV or JSON data file. And so that's what that's what this is here. So if we check this out, you'll see it's just straight up a raw JSON file. And this is kind of what they mean by tabular. So this is explained in the Vegalite docs, but by tabular data, what that looks like in, in JSON. So in a, as a CSV, it will just be a, a, a literal table of data, which is very obvious and straightforward. But representing tabular data in JSON means basically like um, mapping the keys, like the header row onto every subsequent row. So you get these vector, this vector of maps where each map has the same keys and then the values are the rows. Um, but yeah, so you can, you can do that and that's a pretty common one, or you can give it just an explicit vector of maps. So if you are somehow like generating data in closure, and this is where the, this is just sort of starting to get into the cool parts of Hanami. Like, because you can use all the tools you normally have available in Clojure and the full power of the Clojure language to like work with your data, manipulate your data, whatever, or generate it or whatever. But as long as you end up with a vector of maps where each map has the same keys, then you can just pass that Clojure map directly to Hanami. And if you do that, then you want to use the data key instead of uData. And then there's a couple other <clears throat> sources you can use. And data is for a named Vega data channel. So unfortunately, we won't have time to get into that in this workshop, but Vega Light can support sort of live dashboards basically by taking a, a channel um, sort of data that's streaming new information all the time and it will update. And it's kind of it's all it's really nice how it's it's all done. It's all declarative, it's all built into the the grammar itself. And so you don't have to do any like um you know, frustrating like work about really web development or programming. It's it's kind of cool. But anyway, um, that's something to look into if you're interested in that kind of stuff. And then another one is um, F data for file. 
so you can pass a, a path to close your Eden, Eden JSON or CSV file. And if you're giving it your JSON or Eden, you need to have it in that format, that vector of maps, um, sort of tabular JSON format. And then if you give it a CSV file, it will automatically handle it properly. And it will assume the top row is the header row and convert it into that vector of maps for you. So you don't need to like do any sort of fancy stuff in Clojure. Um, and there's, of course, there's lots more. So here's a link to the docs there if you want to dig in and, and see some more details. So yeah, just, I guess, to wrap up, we won't spend too much time like building this up together, but just to show an example of what a graph would look like using Hanami as opposed to just Vega Light. Um, this, <clears throat> this is a graph from the UK uh, climate change dashboard thing that they've recently released. And so, yeah, just sort of in full disclosure, this is partly powered by data that Swirl hosts. Um, and yeah, I guess as a quick side note, if you just want to explore data visualization, you're not looking at this specifically for your own um, like data sets, there's lots of cool example ones. Oh no, that meant I meant to do that in a new tab. Anyway, lots of cool ones available here. This is um, some data that's sort of curated and uh, released by various UK government agencies. So you've got like national statistics and climate data and whatever. Um, oh, sorry. Now I have to reshow my workshop or my notebook. And then there's also um, Kaggle has some some cool data sets that you can play with that are also publicly licensed and, and freely available. And there's obviously a million more places, but if you just wanna like sort of play around with some stuff, those are two places where you can find some, some useful data that's relatively like curated and clean. Um, so anyway, yeah, to create a graph like this, um, we can get we can get the data just off the website. It's freely available there from the source. Um, if you wanted to, you could download it. And yeah, what that looks like. So in this case, I've just put it in um, you know, on my class path in the project itself, but you could like slurp this in or, or access it some other way. But anyway, it's it's checked into that repo as well if you are following along or if you've uh, if you've cloned this. So this data set is available there. And so I just pass it in as a file. And then here we've got two layers. And the first layer is this blue actual chart. And the second layer is the trend line. So in this case, we're mapping the year and the annual mean temperature and like that's how we're we're sort of telling it to encode these values. And then anyway, I guess yeah, we're pretty much out of time, right, Daniel? So I guess we'll probably wrap up there. But if you want to, basically, if you want to sort of build this up one step at a time, um, you can see just what happens. Like what happens if you comment this out, or if you comment that out, or if you comment that out, and see see what each each piece of the each one of these sort of variables is doing. But um, yeah, just as this is one example of, of what's possible with Hanami. And then I think at the bottom, there's another example. If you, if you have the repo, uh, you can see what that, that Vega light spec that we just copy pasted at the beginning, sort of rebuilding that with Hanami is, would look something like this. Um, so, but yeah, I'll leave it there for today since this is just kind of a, a quick, um, like whirlwind tour, but obviously I'm I'm on the the closure in Slack and Zulip uh, and GitHub and wherever all over the internet. So feel free to ping me anytime or um, ask any questions or whatever. Hey, thank you very much. That was super quick and packed with a lot of great. <laughs> um, just a reminder that there is a Zulip channel for discussion. Um, so feel free to ask questions there. And now Daniel will say uh, a few words about uh, this.cog before we open the discussion. Perfect. Yeah, 
that was fantastic. Thank you so much. So really briefly, I share the screen uh, and show a little bit of this new library by Ashima Panjwani that will be uh, announced in the coming days and where we had a talk about it yesterday. Um, so what VizCLJ tries to do is to offer an easy API for plotting, probably less powerful than Hanami, uh, but hopefully very easy. It is built on top of Hanami and uses this pipeline-like uh, fashion of writing pure data transformations, where the last data transformation is always a Hanami substitution that results in a Vega light spec. The reason we don't see the spec, but actually see the plot is that this specific tool, node space we're using, likes to already show the plot, but it is just returning a Vega light spec. And this library tries to embrace the TechML dataset and tablecloth library. So it is aware of the dataset data structure and you can just pass a dataset to its functions. And it allows for a certain grammar where you can specify the so-called encodings, those bindings between data and aesthetics. And it is trying to be unsurprising to catch typical user mistakes and data problems, which are kind of a trouble with these things sometimes. And that's it, more or less. Uh, it has had a very interesting research process where Ashima has been researching not only user needs and you know user feedback in uh, sessions in our uh, weekend sessions but also other apis of other languages to learn from and that is the current result but the hope is to keep evolving this grammar in a way that allows for um for to, to embrace what we are learning from user session here is an interesting detail here this library is passing a closure map through a pipeline of pure data transformations. And it is use, doing that using um, the so-called metamorph approach that is used by Carsten Bering in CycloGML. So that means that even after you started creating your plot, you can keep transforming the data using the tablecloth pipeline namespace that embraces that metamorph approach as well. And another detail is that since we are retaining a Hanami uh, structure of substitution, we can actually involve Hanami substitutions. So actually we are not losing the power of Hanami here. And since we are returning a Vega light plot, we can keep evolving this plot and actually change the resulting data structure and so here, for example, we are setting the background color. Uh, it also supports some ba backend side. Uh, oh, it also supports layers. So you can have a few layers using Hanami. Um, and it also supports backend side transformations like linear regression and histogram. And that maybe brings us to another data visualization library that allows for creating Vega specs. And that is TechViz by Chris Nornberger. And maybe Chris would like to briefly comment about it in the discussion part, because TechViz has a lot of things that we don't have here in VizCLJ. Uh, for example, a very interesting histogram function that is kind of colorful and fun. So that's it. And I'm so grateful to Ashima for this process, which was so inspiring in this wisdom of focus on embracing user needs and growing the API gradually. Thanks. Um, okay, so just very fast, um, I'm only going to speak for like a couple minutes the most because at the end of the day, I think tech viz is going to be seeded by any number of libraries. Um, and I wrote a lot of it just to get something done extremely fast. And uh, the idea is similar to the vega.clj design, but not nearly as well thought out, is to have kind of functional transformations on things. Um, let's see if I have an example down here of using it. 
uh, functional transfer. Yeah, yeah, that's not how you go there. Uh, functional transformations of of doing things, but um, I want to basically uh, I was talk about this namespace, which is in the tech.biz library, and it's basically a reimplementation of the PyPlot API, which um, I was working on a project uh, with a guy who did all of his work in PyPlot and Pandas, and I did, of course, the data processing in TMD. But I thought that PyPlot actually had a pretty clean API that allows you to do multiple graphs by functional composition. And I, I want to repeat, this was before viz.clj was out. I think viz.clj, in my opinion, supersedes anything that I've done in this library. But um, it also has uh, a show method, just like PyPlot does, that will show a graph of, of data based off, um, you know, passing in a Vega light spec. So um, real quick, uh, we start with some data. Um, and uh, we can easily plot it. Um, and then if we want to show kind of a AX V line, we can show a vertical line. Um, at a given location. This has been really useful because a lot of times we, when we were working on the data set we were working with, there were like known test results at certain points in time. And we were trying to look at how well the data could protect some of these known test results. And so being able to quickly draw um, vertical uh, lines and horizontal lines on a graph to do exactly like that kind of thing to show what's going on is really useful. And I just thought the, the, the Python API for PyPlot, aside from the fact that it was eliding the first argument, so aside from the fact that it was mutating something behind the scenes, which you could have just passed in as the first argument had you had a thread first operator, actually had a very clean API for composing uh, a complex plot from lots of different things. And so, um, I found it really easy uh, using PyPlot to do uh, kind of a lot of stuff. Uh, YSS color blue. Um, uh, yeah. And, and I just thought it couldn't be that hard to do the same thing with Vega. And I don't think I did it correctly because like you don't see, um, you don't see a legend on this and adding a legend that worked across all the different plots because I use layers. I'm not even sure how possible that is. I'm sure other people listening know that it would be easy, but um, I, I just thought there was space. Hanamai is a data-oriented way of composing things. And I thought there was a functional way of composing things. And so as a final example, I wanna show like, it, it was very easy to do subplots um, which was another thing that we had to do. And that gets into um, kind of showing data on different axes and different layers. And I really think that's the neatest thing about this library. It was just very, very short and just a couple quick things so that I could make my notebooks look like um, my uh, partner's notebooks in very, very closely. So the data set processing, mirrored his processing and uh, the plotting mirrored his graphs. And I could get the same graphs for the same processing, which because we were dealing with kind of complex numerical functions, it was very, very important to prove that we could do these things in closure that he was doing in Pandas. So that's really all I have um, about uh, this pathway. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I think we have about five minutes for discussion at this point, uh, given the schedule. And uh, John Anthony is here. So, uh, John, would you like to say something, or should we open for questions, or what would you like to do? Um, sure. Um, uh, by the way, I think uh, it would be good to maybe keep going just a little more because. Yeah, we can be a behind schedule. It is worth it. Sure.
So, um, uh, the only thing, I, I, yeah, I thought that uh, presentation by Kara was, was really good. Uh, actually better than anything I've done, I think. <laughs> so, uh, the one thing that I, she didn't have time to mention is this, uh, the ability to do parameterization of templates. And so you can basically create an entire menagerie of chart types and stuff like that, that are very succinct, that do specific domain application kind of um, plotting and charting stuff. And one of the ways to do that in particular is there's a capability in the thing where you can specify defaults that are local to templates. So that kind of gives you this ability to effectively program these things. So I, in a way, I think that's probably another uh, interesting, maybe an important point to make is that uh, doing these templates is a kind of programming. It's actually a kind of programming. Um, and it, it takes a little getting used to, but once you have it, it starts to fall into place pretty quickly and you sort of understand how to do it. And you can create your own custom charts and plots and things like that that abstract away all the noise that you typically have to deal with in Vega and Vega light specs and um, uh, support you in and, and deploying those things across a boatload of, of, of data sets and, and um, uh, uh, presentations and things like that. The only other thing I would say is in, in a connection to understand sort of what this thing is doing, and uh, that connects up a little bit with what uh, Wolfram was saying the other day, is it, it's, it's effectively a rewrite system. And, and it uh, will do the, do the rewrites until you reach a fixed point, as he, as he was pointing out in talking about rewrite systems. And that's exactly what it does. So that may be another way to think about it. Okay, thank you. And now we can open it for questions, discussions, anything anybody would like to say. Maybe in the meantime, I'll say the next session will be about visual tools. So it will be kind of complementary to this one. So any thoughts or questions about tools may just wait just a bit for the coming session. And I see a hand from Lucas. Um, question to John about Henemy. Um, I see that you've got dependencies on uh, the like ring and recom and everything. Uh, if I just wanted to uh, the, use it to get a smaller way to generate uh, the Vega specifications, uh, I kind of wouldn't want all the ring dependencies and so on. Um, do you have plans to pull the schema Vega stuff out there uh, of like the, the, the hosting part or do you plan to keep it all in one? Uh, that's come up before. It's, it's probably the right thing to do to pull it out. Um, I, think it'll, I think it's also in some sense always going to be inside of Hanami, uh, but pulling the thing out is, is, pro is probably worth doing for mostly for the, the primary reason is as as Kira pointed out as well you can use this thing to do a lot more than just uh, uh, Vega and Vega light specs so I actually use it internally to do transfer code transformations in um, in Cite. so that shows that it is indeed more general than just doing spec kind of stuff. So I do think that that's coming sooner than later, that it'll be pulled out. 